first of all, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Thank you. It's great yeah. to be here. One thing I know that, that has the Recording Academy has been working on for quite some time is um, credits and metadata. Um, it does seem like credits are finally, the, the, the value of credits are being recognized in the marketplace. The labels are actually looking for these things at a, on a mass scale. Yeah, that is a huge part of what we want to do with the Creative Passport. It's not the only thing. Um, essentially, we got very inspired by this technology called blockchain, which Zoe Keating introduced me to about four, four years ago. I was just getting frustrated at the fact that I was going to release another song into the ether, and it was just, it was basically just going to fall off a cliff, and I wouldn't know what's happening to it, and I wouldn't be able to kind of um, arm it or give it you know, all the all the tools and the tricks that it needs to go and do the business that it needs to make sure everybody is acknowledged, to make sure everybody gets paid properly, to make sure that, you know, it has the correct lyrics or whatever it might need. It just, it's so frustrating that that doesn't exist with the song in the form that is then accessed by, you know, everyone. And I shared this vision of a future music industry that I would love to see um, inspired by this and, you know, essentially building a layer of, you know, um, cohesive song data, fully packed out with all of it, all it needs to do business with the world in time that might be including licensing information or including, you know, stems or whatever, just like that it's all connected. It is a way, it is a tool that perhaps we could use to utilize this non-centralized database. I don't even like using the word database because it's a distributed system, a distributed ledger, as they say. It's like a place for information to live and to connect to other pieces of information and to have a record of what that thing did over time. Musicians should not be left out this time. That always musicians are at the end. The technology gets developed and the musicians have to figure out how to react to it. And I was like, wouldn't it be great this time if musicians were there at the beginning? Do you find that the technology brings new ideas? And if so, do you maybe have a story of, of something that came to you as a result of that? I have a very nice example. Thank you. Um, I bought this very fancy new Mac with like all my money that I had left over, um, which is not very much, and kind of created loads of stuff over the two weeks and then forgot to back it up or just didn't back it. hadn't learned the lesson yet. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the motherboard, like little puff of smoke and some, yeah, and that was very depressing. And then, but before leaving the studio that night, I, I always try to leave with uh, a positive, something positive left in the air, whether that's a bit of improvisation or... So I saw this little device, which is a, um, a Digitech workstation um, a, a called a, a vocal vocal workstation. Um, so I plugged it into the, the keyboard and I sang, it's a harmonizer. And so I sung in uh, whatever came into my mind and that was the beginnings of hide and seek. Using that new sound and never having heard my voice being harmonized ever before, and also the fact that it was set to a four note polyphony because I hadn't yet fiddled around with the knobs and, you know, changed that. And it was really amazing. It was like I was kind of jamming with myself. Um, did, like, this other creature, this this harmonized version of myself was coming to life and I was kind of jamming with it. And uh, yeah, obviously that, that had a big effect on my life. What excites you right now in terms of new technology, things that you want to see happen Next. When I'm writing music, uh, I would like to be able to walk into my studio. My studio is aware of my emotional state, perhaps. And perhaps it presets everything according to my previous preferences um, to you know, exhibit uh, certain sounds. And then that I would be able to just move through air and point at things and kind of bring them to life. Um, that's what I would like to happen in 10 years. And that's what we're hoping to get to a place with, with the Mimu gloves uh, in conjunction with so many other gesture interfaces that have been developed. I think the problems will be the same whatever the technology does. Um, I sometimes fear that it, when the technology gets better and better at realizing your ideas, it'll be more apparent that your ideas suck. <laughs> 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 and you'd be confronted with a brutal reality that you're not quite as good as you thought you were. Um, <laughs> so there's that. But because I do know that sometimes it's creative misunderstandings between people that actually generate really interesting results. It can be that thing where one person thought you meant X and you didn't. Um, uh, I've had wonderful experiences in the studio that emerge from people completely missing, misunderstanding each other. This is Glover, everybody. This is the software that we use to interface uh, from my physical gloves over here. They're called the Mi Mu gloves, M-I.M-U, like me and music. So okay, you've got your, your left hand glove. There you can see up and down, left. Oh, wait, I've got to set forwards. Um, okay, so forwards, left. So I'm 
going to reach in just by going my left fist to access a different scene so I can now record some more loops. going to do now is just calibrate my gloves this is quite interesting this bit because i'm basically calibrating to show the gloves you know where the bend sensors are on my hands right now and for somebody like chris Halpin, even who is this amazing um, musician he's got cerebral palsy this is essential for him because his how his hands move from one day to the next is very different um and just like then the bend sensors were reacting differently maybe because they've slightly moved on my hand or whatever, maybe they're slightly sweaty. Um, but it, uh, it means that look, now open hand is open hand, but before it wasn't. Before it wasn't. Um, so for, for Chris, this is amazing because it means he can put on the gloves and he can have access to all of this, uh, all of these options. He's a guitarist, but he's struggling when his, his condition was getting worse that he couldn't reach the chords he wanted to, so he's going to give up music. But what it's done is it's given him this amazing, you know, new direction in sound and capabilities um completely dependent on how he feels from one day to the next so he's he's very excited and he's been quite key to helping us develop this um you know we never thought about that side of things what's up y'all this is bob this is g easy i'm mo this is julia michaels this is logic make sure you subscribe to the recording academy channel flex